Okay, welcome to another video supporting you through the GCAST course. I hope you have all registered and enrolled to the course that went live on the 4th of January. This video is dedicated to the week one content of the course, which is cyber threats and incidents. So let's start with a quick roundup of cybersecurity incidents of 2020 and then look at a very interesting visualization tool to keep yourself updated on the security incidents happening around the world. Here's a quick snapshot of your GCAST journey. I have created other videos on the GCAST learning journey. Please look up the videos using the links provided in the description box below. You should have by now uh, registered with Stainable and enrolled to OpenLearn uh, and to the GCAST course and should have started your course that went live on the 4th of January. You are expected to complete the course by 28th of February in order for you to get the digital badge as well as avail the free career coaching and free Cisco courses that are on offer as part of this project. So you basically, upon completing the course and earning that digital badge, get access to free Cisco training materials on cyber essentials and cyber ops courses. Now, upon completing those courses, you will receive a certificate of completion from Cisco. In addition to that, you also will receive discounted fees on any examination uh, that you want to sit uh, as part of the Cisco certification exams. You also have access to the Talent Bridge portal from Cisco, where you can showcase your certificates, your CV and your skills to a network of employers, which could potentially lead to your first job in cybersecurity. Please look up all the relevant links that uh, in the description box below, uh, both relating to your learning journey, as well as uh, links to access the course itself. Okay, for those of you who have enrolled and started your learning journey on GCAST, week one uh, is dedicated to cyber threats and incidents. And section 1.3 and 1.4 you would have had a brief peek into a few cybersecurity attacks and examples of breaches. Let me now provide you some more examples of such incidents in the recent past in the UK. This will give you an idea of the types of attacks and the kind of information being compromised. It is reported that humans and human errors are the number one cause of 90% of all cybersecurity incidents and data breaches across the world. Here are a few examples from within the UK that occurred in the last few months caused by human errors. In Sheffield Council, 279 parking fine letters were printed, double-sided instead of single-sided, and were mailed to recipients. This resulted in around 140 people receiving the names, addresses, and registration numbers of other people. In another incident, a social worker lost personal information of people in a car theft. Printed letters that had personal information of various people that were to be mailed was stolen as part of that theft. An email error caused a data breach in Bristol Council. The Bristol Council sent out an email asking for comments on a new support service for disabled children. In the email, the names and contacts of the children and their carers was visible to all the recipients. The general guideline to organizations that experience such data breaches and attacks is that they report such breaches to the Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO. The ICO will then determine whether the organization is penalized for the incident and the extent of penalty as well. A social housing provider in Norwich, England, has said it was hit with the Sodino Kibi ransomware attack following a successful phishing attack. The overall impact of the attack is yet to be known. However, this was the, the modus operandi of the attack. All the victims received a phishing email with a Microsoft Word as an attachment. And when the victims opened the document, the malicious document claimed that it was created in an earlier version of Microsoft Office and asked the victims to enable the macros embedded in the content, which then launches a code hidden in the macros. The code then downloads the ransomware and saves it as a Microsoft update file. It then runs the two executable files shown at the command prompt. The first one deletes all backup copies of important files in the system, and the second modifies the Windows configuration to remove the automatic file recovery function. 
Following this, all files are encrypted and the ransomware message is displayed. As part of the message, a URL is provided for information on how the files can be decrypted. Typically, the attackers make a copy of the encrypted files for themselves. It has, it has become necessary to follow the information about security incidents to understand their impact. The most recent cybersecurity incidents, as I hear, sorry, repeat. The most recent incidents I hear as I speak to you are phishing attempts about administering the COVID vaccine. Here's an interesting visualization tool. Follow the link provided in the description box below. On clicking that link, it should take you to this visualization tool. The size of the bubbles in this visualization indicates the number of data records that's stolen or breached. You can filter the data breaches based on the type or the method of attack or the type of industry the attack was targeted at. Let's have a quick look at all the attacks that were caused by hacking attempts and the number of data records breached due to hacking, those hacking attempts. This can be done by clicking on the hacked as the method of breach and you will see the number of data records quickly changed. Uh, the top few attacks that were um, due to hacking attempts are the one by the Pakistani mobile operators where personal details were stolen from Jazz and other mobile networks and were put for sale for $2.1 million in Bitcoin. And this occurred in April 2020. So if you hover on those bubbles, you will get to read a bit more about the attack. And if you click those bubbles, you will get further details and news reports on those attacks. So you could go ahead and play around with this tool, understand various attacks, the types of attacks, the specific sectors that were affected. And this visualization tool has uh, data breaches right from 2000 for up to December 2020. So it's a, it's a wonderful tool, an interesting tool to uh, keep yourself updated about various data breaches and, and the type of attacks that cause those data breaches. And finally, remember to enroll to the course and complete it prior to 28th February. The link to the course is provided below and link to the learning journey video is also provided below. Uh, in order for you to get free access to the Cisco training for Cyber Essentials and Cyber Ops certification, you need to complete this course prior to 28th February. All the necessary links are provided in the description box below. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next video. And in the following week, you will understand how to keep in touch with news relating to cybersecurity and data breaches. And uh, I'll meet you in another related video to the course. Happy learning. I think I've got reasonably good... Uh...